Hi, I'm Joni Petrie, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I'd like to talk about a remarkable woman who just passed away, Gloria Vanderbilt. I think her life is just incredibly amazing. And when you read about her life story, you really cannot even fathom that somebody went through so much in one lifetime. I found her so fascinating that I even used her chart and made reference to her in my first book, which is Eastern Astrology for Western Minds. But I wanted to look at her chart and show you how interesting and fascinating and how you can see everything that occurred in her life through her birth chart. So let's put her birth chart up here, Gloria Vanderbilt. She was born February 20th, 1924. And the birth time that I'm using is 9.55 a.m. in New York, New York. Now this gives her ascendant in Aries. So her ascendant being in Aries. And what does that do? That makes Mars the chart ruler because Mars rules Aries. And that's what I call the ascendant ruler, the chart ruler. Whatever house it goes to will be the focus on and off throughout life. And Mars goes to the eighth house. The eighth house is the house of death. Realized when she was only about a year and a half old, her father died of alcoholism. So when you go to Gloria's chart, notice that Mars, ruler of the chart, not only is in the eighth house, but it also happens to rule the eighth house. So it's ruler of the eighth and the eighth, really bringing to the forefront, what? Death. And what does the eighth house also rule besides death? Money through others, such as in inheritances. The eighth house rules inheritances, right? So the ninth house in Vedic astrology is the father, not the tenth. <clears throat> so you can see the ruler of the ninth, which is the father, Sagittarius is on the ninth house cusp, so therefore Jupiter rules the ninth house. So Jupiter is the father. Jupiter goes to the eighth house with Mars. So you can see here that the, that the death of the father was imminent right when she died, right when she was born, a year and a half. And guess what? She inherited a fortune. She's one of the richest women in the world as a child because she inherited, I don't even know how many millions back, back in the day. But here's the thing. Her mother was very young when she had her, very irresponsible. And the father, of course, died of alcoholism. Her mother didn't want to take care of Gloria. She left her alone all the time with nannies. Of course, you know, they had millions. Her mother was used to the lifestyle of going to parties, being with the rich, the famous, with kings and queens all over the world, and left Gloria with a nanny. And when Gloria called the nanny mother, or mama, guess what? Her mom heard it, fired her. Gloria said that was the most devastating day because that was the only person that she knew and loved in the world, her nanny. And her mother took her away. So then a big scandal came in the 1930s where her aunt wanted to take her away from her mother because her mother simply wasn't there forever. And of course, with by the time Gloria was about 18 years old, she was due to inherit that fortune of everything. So everybody started fighting over Gloria. And back in the day, they called her little rich girl. I mean, poor little rich girl. Why? Because the poor thing, but you know, here she is, multimillionaire back in the day. And she was just a child. So this was constantly back on the news in the 1930s about the, the scandal about her mother and who was going to take over the care of Gloria. And there was all sorts of scandals. I can't remember. There was like people who were 
corrupt and it was crazy. And this was the life that she grew up in. But Gloria being the artist, being as creative as she is, boy, you can see that in her chart because she has Venus in Pisces in the 12th house. Now Venus is exalted in Pisces. And when I see Venus in the 12th house, remember this, here's a rule. Don't forget it. When Venus is in the 12th house, it doesn't lose strength. It's actually empowered. So Gloria loved to escape the world through what? Her art. This is a powerful Venus. And when you go to her fifth house, her fifth house, she has the moon Rahu. Fifth house meaning the house of creativity. Let me remind you. And the fifth house ruler is also the sun, which goes to the 11th house. Notice this. Her sun and her moon are in opposition, tied up with Rahu and Ketu. Do you know what that means? She was born under a lunar eclipse. That's when you have a full moon, when the moon and the sun are in opposition, and when they're tied up with Rahu and Ketu. This means a life of destiny. And what is the mother? The moon. What is the father? The sun. They're tied up with Rahu and Ketu. There were these extremes and, a, and her father died. And by the way, we looked at the fact that Mars is in the eighth house conjunct Jupiter, ruler of the ninth, the death of the father. Another way to understand what happens with the father is to look at the sun because the sun is the karka of the father. And the sun is with K2, losses with the father. K2 is losses. But going to the mother, Rahu is extremes, and it's with the moon, which represent a mother that was excessive and you know, had issues, problems. But the moon Rahu being in the fifth house represents her creative talents. You see Gloria, after many hardships and many marriages, she became an artist. And she was a designer, a fashion designer. Her jeans were amazing back in the 80s, 90s. She had, you know, Van Gloria Vanderbilt's jeans. They were amazing. So that was part of who she was. Now the ruler of the fifth, being her creativity, is the sun, because her fifth house has Leo. The sun is with K2. And it's in the 11th house of gains through her creativity, through her uniqueness. And she was known to be very, very unique and ahead of her time, of course, always. But when I look at, when I think of another house that deals with our creative talents, I always think about the third house. And remember the fifth house deals with creative talents as well because it's a third house from the third house. So three, the third house and the fifth house are creativity. But the ruler of the third being creative is Mercury, because she has Gemini there. So Mercury goes to the 10th house. She had a career based on her creative talents. Isn't that fabulous? So you can see where these planets go to according to their house rulers. Now, looking at her Saturn, being in her seventh house of her marriage partner. Gloria was always marrying men, well, not always, but two of them were extremely older than herself. As a matter of fact, one of her husbands was 63 when she was like 17. I mean, who does that? This is like her grandfather, but we all know why. She never had a father. She was searching and seeking her father. But exalted Saturn in the seventh house. She was searching for security. And it's exalted by the fact that it's in Libra. She always married artists, writers, composers, talented men. But so much more mature. She was married four times. Four times. And the ruler of the seventh house is Venus, and it goes to the twelfth house of losses. So she even had a husband die. 
Now, there was another horrific event that occurred in Gloria's life, and that was the loss of a child. She's had four children, but her two younger children from a later marriage were one, I think everyone may know by now, was Anderson Cooper, the reporter that's on CNN all the time. He's, he's amazing. Um, but it, there was another brother. And one time when they were laying down for a nap, this brother somehow jumps out the window of their high rise in New York City and falls to his death. This was so horrendous, but when you see what's going on in Gloria's chart with the Rahu moon in the fifth house of children, you know there's an issue. The ruler of the fifth house is the sun, and it is with K2, which represents losses. Plus, we have Uranus there, Uranus K2 sun. That represents sudden, unexpected events. So you can see how this all transpires and occurs throughout her life. Gloria Vanderbilt was an icon. What a life. What a message. What a powerful woman that lived life to the fullest. That's what I'll say for Gloria Vanderbilt. And... It was all about one thing I love that she said. She was always trying to escape this world through her creativity. It wasn't about all the power and money that she had. It was about her being creative and expressing herself. And that's where she found her joy and happiness. She was incredible. So I want to just leave you with that. And I just wanted to give you a little look at this incredible woman and her life. And just the power of Vedic astrology, how you can see all of this in her chart. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like more information on me and like a chart reading, you can always go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. Or if you would like to learn Vedic astrology, take this to the next level. I have a university online. It is university of Vedic Astrology.com. Thank you.